Hey guys, it's Matt. Welcome to Speed Tutor, and today I'm going to show you how to create a note or something that will appear on your screen where you can customize the text, which you find in any number of adventure, horror, any style of game where you click on the note and it appears on the screen. You can change the background and do other things like that. Now, this is a really simplified version because I do have something on the Unity Asset Store, my note system which has four different variations of doing this, whether you can change the background, you can create custom sizes, custom notes, change all the fonts, the text, everything. And I spent a long time putting that together so you can get hold of that if it's more interesting. So in this example here, I've got an FPS controller that we're going to use and make this work. So we're gonna start off creating the user interface things that are gonna appear on screen. So we'll right click, choose UI, and I'm just going to start off by choosing the canvas with a panel. So the panel is just going to be renamed as my background panel. And it's just going to be something that's going to technically sort of blur out the background. I'll make it gray and keep the alpha value quite high. So it just makes that background harder to see. Now we want to put the piece of paper or whatever we have. So we've got UI, choose image in this case. And I'm just going to call this the note image. And now I've got a sprite here, which I've already created, which is just a piece of paper with a transparent background. You want to make sure that it's set as Sprite 2D and UI. So we can add this sprite to that slot. And you can see that it's really tiny there. And I'm going to have this value about 1050 by 1050, like so. Make sure that you go back to your canvas and make sure that you scale with screen height and size and set that to a base resolution of 1920 by 1080, just so that no matter when you scale it, we might want to add some text to this. So we're going to right click the note image, choose UI and choose text for text mesh pro. You may need to import the text mesh pro essentials, but once we've got that, we can call this our note text. And if I just switch to 2d mode at the top, you can see my text here. I'm going to drag this to my top corner. I'm just going to scale all this down. I'll maybe keep it in the center and then drag the extensions across. I'll make sure that the vertex color of the text is black. And then, you know, we can write in here anything that we need to, but we're going to update this in script. So that's everything for that canvas. Now, you see, we can just turn that on and off. And that's the note that we're going to make appear. I'm just going to create a crosshair, which we can use to detect the actual note that we might have. So if I go UI, I'm just going to create another canvas to create a crosshair. So I'm just going to call this crosshair canvas. And then I'm going to right click, choose UI, choose image make that the crosshair image. And I'm just going to scale this width and height by three by three. So you can see it here. It's really, really small. Do be sure to check out all the links in the description for all the best sales, savings, and everything you can find in game dev. And be sure to check out my Patreon, which has this tutorial and over 185 different scripts, assets, and projects you cannot find anywhere else. Now, what we're going to do as an example is we're going to create our own note. I'm going to right click the hierarchy, choose 3D objects, and just choose cube. And this is the cube I'm going to create, which is just going to act as my note. So I'm going to just put this exactly where I want it and scale it down. And I'm just giving it a red material just so that we know exactly what's going on. Now I want to write a raycast to detect the note that's in front of the camera. So I'm going to go on my main camera and just add a new component. And I'm going to go to a new script. And I'm just really going to call this our raycast. You can give this a better name to help you out. So on our raycast, we at the top, we can use Unity using unityengine.ui. And then at the top, I'm going to create some Raycast features. So first of all, will be the ray length that we're going to use. So I have a private serialized field of the flow of the ray length that we're going to use. Then what I want is I want a private camera. So we're going to access the camera because we're going to get the area of the camera. Now, then I want to reference the script that we're going to create, which we're going to access when we click on any of the notes. So I'll just keep that hidden for now. Then I'm going to create a reference to the crosshair, which is just an image, which we're going to update. And then I'm just going to also create an input. So the key code of the code that we're going to use or the button press we're going to use to make sure that when we look at the note, we'll press the button and make it appear. So now in our start method, we want the camera to be equal to get component in the camera because this is going to live on the main camera. That's fine. It finds our component. Now, on the update method, we want to start by creating our raycast. So we'll say that if physics dot raycast, then open up the brackets and then underscore camera dot viewport to world point. And then we're going to specify new vector three, open up brackets, we'll say 0.5 F comma 0.5 F. Then after two brackets, we'll have a common and say transform dot forward comma out raycast hit and then we'll call that as a shorthand of hit 
and just then specify the ray length. And then under here, so we're just getting the center of the camera. So no matter whereabouts this object will be, it will always look at the center of your screen. Next, we'll use a var readable item is equal to hit.collider.getComponent. And then in angle brackets, we're just going to write the node controller or the script that we're going to create. will not like it for now. And that's what we're going to find at any one time. And then we'll say that if the readable item is not equal to null. So if there is something that we've seen, then we'll say that our note controller is equal to the readable item, just so that we can set that. And then what I want to do is highlight the crosshair, something like that. And then in any other case, then else we're going to clear the readable item, just so that when we look away, it will go. Now under this curly bracket here, we're also going to say else do the same thing. We're going to clear the examinable item just in case if we have looked and we can't find it, or if we've used the raycast and we've not found anything, we just want to make sure that it's always clear. Then under this else statement, we want to say that if we are in my case, the note controller, which we will create is not equal to null at this point. Again, we'll say that if input dot get key down, and then in brackets, we'll say the interact key. And then below here, we'll say that our note controller, and then we're going to show the note that we want. Now below the two curly brackets here, we want to create a new method, which is just going to be our clear note option. And what's going to happen there is that if we say that the note controller is not equal to null. So if there is something there, we want to disable the crosshair and the note controller will it equal null? So we can create a method called highlight crosshair, have a parameter of bool, set that to on. And then if it is on or off, we'll set it to red or white, depending on what we've set. So with that being said, we'll update our options. So we want to disable it. So we want to make sure that it's false. If it's false, it's going to be white because if it's on, it's red. And then above, we want to highlight the crosshair again. But in this case, it needs to be true. So we can go quickly back into Unity to create our other script to be able to use it. So if I just go and create a new C sharp script and call this our note controller, and once that's being created, you, we can unhide that method. So we've got the note controller, which is underscore note controller, just to keep that simple. Now, in this case, we need underscore note controller is equal to our readable item. We're going to in the else clear the note that we have. Again, we can do that below. So we'll just copy that method and paste it in. Then in this case, the note controller should have something called show note. So we're just going to go into our note controller. We'll just create a public void show note as just an example of something we're going to use later. So now we'll say, say underscore note controller dot show note. So that's the method that we're going to apply. Clear note is going to be the underscore note controller again which will be equal to null if we're going to clear what we have. And that's everything that we need to get started with the Raycast. Now in our note controller itself, we want access to using TM Pro. I'm going to use Unity events to play specific audio effects. So we'd have to write it in code if in case you want to add other events or other actions, so we'll say Unity engine.events. And in my case, because I'm using the default standard assets Unity FPS controller, I want to access the standard assets dot characters dot first person and to be able to disable what we're going to look at variable we want the input so i want to set the close key i also want to get access to the player so i'm referencing the fps first person controller script which is something that we can disable that entire script and it stops us moving around we're going to create a reference to the notepad canvas which is just a game object and an access to that text that we're going to update which is tmp underscore text. And then we're going to create our own field, which will be the text that we're going to input anytime we want. So every time we select another note, we can put different text. And then we're going to have a unity event, which will be an open event. So when we open the note, we'll do something. And we need to say that we'll check for a private Boolean, which whether it should be open or closed or when it actually happens. So in our show note, what happens? So we need to update that text. So we'll say note text area UI dot text is equal to the note text that where we've specified. So that will update as soon as we open that note. We want to make sure that we turn the canvas on. So note canvas dot set active. And in this case is true. 
So we want to make it appear. We might want to in open the event, what we created, which was the Unity event, and say dot invoke. Then we will also want to disable our player so we can't move around or look around when we're interacting with a node because that would be bad. You could walk somewhere where you didn't mean to. And then we want to say that is open equals true. So when that note is actually happening, it's open at that point. And then of course, because we've got a show note method, we'll just have a void disable note method, which we can control. So then we're going to get the note canvas again, set it to false because we don't need it anymore, enable the player. And then we're also going to say that is open is equal to false. You can actually set this note text area if you want to say null, so then it will equal nothing, but it's really dependent to you. So when we disable it, it just gets rid of whatever text was in there. Then in this example is we will need a way to disable our player. Now this will be dependent on how you or what controller you're using. I'm going to create a new method to disable the player and have a bool of whether disable is true or false at any one time. So if that is the case, we can say because we created a shorthand to the FPS controller script and it just, if I disable it, it stops any movement. I can say player.enabled equals the opposite of what disable is. So in our case, where we want to disable the player, we can call the method disable player and set that equal to true because yes, we want to disable him. And then on the other side, we want to set is disable equals false. Then the last thing we need to do is a simple input. So we can say void update. So if it is open at any point, we know we're reading the note. So then we'll say that if input.get key down is the close key that we'd already specified, then we're just going to say that we're going to disable our note, which inherently disables the canvas, enables the player and says that it's not open anymore. So then we can do our same thing again. So now if we go back to Unity, I'll go to my main camera, make sure that my Raycast script is on my main camera, which it is. Ray length is five. And I'm going to set the crosshair image here. And I'm going to set the interact key to maybe I'm going to set it to mouse zero, which is just the left click on the mouse. So when I left click, I want to open it. And then on my cube here, which is my note, I'm going to add my note controller script. So now the close key can be mouse one, which is right click. I'm going to set my player, which is the FPS controller. I need the note canvas that I wanted to add. And I wanted to access the note text area, which I've got. And now in this case is we need some text. I've written my little bit of text here. And then we've got an open event so we can create an event to happen when it's opened. So this can give you access to other things. Now I'm just going to create a empty game object in the hierarchy. And I'm just going to call this not audio. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to sounds and I've just got a paper flip sort of sound effect. Don't want it to play on a way. It's going to be a 2D sound. Go back onto my note and you can see that the open event, I can add my note audio. Going to make sure that we press play when that happens. So of course, like I said, you could do more events if you so wish. Now, if we test it out and you can see my yellow cursor, which is just for highlighting this tutorial, but you can see it turns red when we look at it and when we walk away, nothing. We can left click and you might have heard the actual item appear. And you can see that my note appears and it said you better subscribe or else. And then I can right click to get rid of it, walk around again, but I can open it and I can't move as I'm pressing my keys and moving my mouse. You could then duplicate your notes so you can have two. And in the example, we've got our original and then we've got our next. And again, you can check out my note and letter system, which has this along with loads of customizations and things where you can set your own backgrounds, your own text, your own sizes, you want everything and change all the different functionality of it. So do be sure to check out this tutorial and check out my Patreon to get access to this project and all the scripts and assets that you need. Check out all the links in the description for all the best sales savings and everything you can find in game dev. Check out my great assets on my website for massive savings compared to the Unity Asset Store. Big thank you to all my patrons, including Peter Steiner, Raheem Whitaker, Manos Barracas, Renny Leisure, Walter Dunson, Alyssa Faden, Hush, Thomas Merceleski. Callum Murray, Mark Rondu, Marvin Church, Jean Quaid, Duan Cooper, Johan Elixson, Leslie Winter, Heather Fletcher, Mark Vacon, Andre Ferreira, Larry Antu, Dylan C, Liam Gray, Woblin Lynn, Dennis Foreman, Lemu, Shane Finley, Carl Frederick, Shibiri Myron, Daiko Penica, Josip Gunawan, Tosi Guy Fury, Tamer Arai, Gary Twine, and Daniel GM. And thank you to everybody else who comes to watch the video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.
且